Hello comrades and welcome to Svalbard. This is a place of many mountains and of course the famous polar bear. But first, let me give you some background information. So I went to Svalbard for my graduation from college. The reason? Well, I found the regular Swedish graduation a little bit retarded. Yeah, no, not my idea of a fun time. Anyway, so I went to Svalbard. But let's start from the beginning. I took a plane from Oslo, which surprisingly didn't take that long, about two and a half hours or so. Though once at the Svalbardian Islands, the time just flew. Seeing Spitsbergen from the air was honestly the sight of a lifetime. Also, by the way, plus points for a polar bear at the airport. So we stayed at Haugen Pensionat, the red house in the background, a nice cheap alternative to the otherwise very expensive hotels. Also, Haro reindeer casually walking around in the city. Anyway, so we went for a guided tour around Longyearbyen, the main city of Svalbard. I'll give you a little show of it. Trigger warning, the man here is very Scottish. Tourist all winter. Uh, all houses here is stuffed with these machines. Fast as motorcycles. Uh, made of plastic and aluminium, of course. My only concern is actually that uh, none of these machines last more than three years. <laughs> now, after three years, everything you see here on the right side is uh, going for the container now. Uh, they are three years old, so and it's just to send the garbage to Norway. And But I've heard you pass it on to Sweden, and the Swedes, they are so intelligent, they pass it on to some place in Africa. Yeah. <laughs> now, the quality on these products is uh, extremely low. So, um, most of it, what we see here, is three years old. It's uh, 30,000 kilometers, no more. That's it. Yeah. So we did that. Got to see some great views on the way. On the top of the mountain, I actually stopped and recorded some live footage from Svalbard. I think so we find some uh, uh, antennas, and apparently this is a part of ASCAT, which is a program, uh, international program to measure the sun and measure uh, uh, northern lights and so on. It's quite, quite nice. Um, I'll show you some photos of that right now, and. Uh, yeah, and so we are going up this really, really steep, really steep, um, really steep road uh, to get up here. And uh, let me tell you, it, it's kind of interesting and a bit spooky, a bit spooky. So the next day we went to a mine. This particular mine is called Gruva 3 and literally translates into mine number 3. This particular activity was kind of interesting because we had a private guide. And I got to try and crawl through a tunnel in the mine like a true peasant miner. Let me tell you something about mines though. They are dark. They are very very dark. They are very cold. But primarily they are very very dark. We had headlamps as this little bulb you can see on the screen. Yeah, they did not light up much. Also, they were very uncomfortable and hard to aim. So, yeah, the darkness, not that nice. So the next day was a special day for me. This was the day of my graduation. Of course, I wanted to do something that I really love, so the obvious choice was to climb mountains. We went with this French guide, really nice dude to be honest, Seems like there is just something about mountain climbers and having a nice attitude.
Finally, at 11.58 am the 14th of July, I put my hat on and could officially say that I had graduated from college. Now, I think you can see how happy I am spending that moment on the top of a mountain. It really made the entire trip special and nonetheless very worth it. After that majestic moment on the summit, it was time to head back down. This was a very, very, and I mean very tedious process. Usually walking on a glacier is spot on. It's hard packed ice, so it's not a problem. Now we came in July, the sun was burning hot. And yes, I am aware we are at Svalbard, but it was still warm, trust me. So the snow has started melting. This led us to sinking through the snow. Yeah, that was the tedious part. Fun though. So fast forward a day and we land back in the Soviet Union. This is the abandoned mining town of Pyramida. Pyramiden was originally a Swedish mining town that was then sold to the Russians. It is called Pyramiden because the Swedes thought the mountain looked like a pyramid. There was a surprising amount of wildlife in this abandoned Soviet town. We saw foxes and more seagulls than people. So yeah, interesting. Now I'm just gonna let this town speak for itself and I'll see you in a little while. To go to and from Pyramiden, you'll have to travel by boat. Along the ride you'll get to see all kinds of diamonds from nature. Whales, glaciers and walruses. 10 out of 10 would recommend. Now, let me tell you something about boats. It is very windy at times and can become quite cold. But for the mountains, the birds and of course your destination of choice, it is well to recommend. Even though it might get a bit chilly. So here we are on our last day at Svalbard. We went dog sledding. Yes, you heard right, dog sledding in the middle of July. Now these sleds were a bit special, they had wheels. 
They use them to take tourists and train the dogs in the summer. To go dog sledding, you kind of have to be a dog person. The dogs mostly suit themselves, but sometimes you'll have to step off and show them the way. Most dogs then understand, except for this white one at the back. He probably hit his head or had one too many to drink, because he wasn't running straight. But he was cute, so it's okay. So that was about it for my trip to Svalbard. We did do some other stuff as well, but nothing that's necessarily interesting to show on camera. If you have any questions about my trip, please leave them down in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Have it good, guys!